Umbrella Academy first premiered in 2019, and it revolved around seven siblings with superpowers that were adopted by this billionaire man named Reginald Hargreaves. And then he later goes on to call them a team named Umbrella Academy, hence the name of the show. And it became a blend of like apocalypse mixed with superhero fiction and then mixed with drama as well. And it was pretty good for a first season. But I recently learned that like not a lot of people liked the second season, but I personally enjoyed it. It was not until like season three that I noticed it took a cliff dive in like the writing and the quality. And that's just when I realized that they were repeating the same thing over and over and creating questions to like certain things that they never answered and just like never really resolving certain certain threads that they set up and unfortunately season four is the worst season yet of the show like i'm talking it got really bad like almost the flash levels of bad in writing and i am a little bit surprised uh i had already logged out of the show like after season three because of the events of season three it wasn't that good but like i i at least thought that they were going to round it up like a little bit decently and tie up certain loose threads but boy was i wrong it just got terrible and terrible and it didn't seem possible how they were going to round it up with only six episodes left even though they were one hour long so just for a quick recap in the final season due to the events of season three there are now multiple timelines shattered across like you know the universe basically and there is a faction that wants something known as the cleanse to happen and i believe what the cleanse is is basically every timeline being restored to one original timeline and so the siblings, the seven siblings reconnect, get their powers back from a substance called Marigold, and their whole mission is to stop the cleanse from happening. And for some reason, the Marigold changes most of everyone's abilities and how they work, and it doesn't really make sense how or why it does, why it has that change, and it's just there for plot conveniences, pretty clearly. So for example, Lila had the ability to mimic like everyone's abilities in close proximity, or she had just everyone's like all the seven siblings abilities but now she has she seems to only have five's ability to control space time and she now has laser eyes that she can't she can't control and it's pretty clear that this is just for comedic purposes because i mean it can allow for some funny scenes when the character can't control their powers and stuff like that but that's basically all there is and then victor has this like fiery blast sort of thing that he also can't control but um it doesn't seem that much different from his old powers, just a, just a different color basically, but again, there's a different change of powers. Um, and then whenever Five tries to teleport from place to place, it takes him to this train tunnel underground that connects, like, it's a nexus point of all the alternate timelines. And it, he, keep, he keeps on going there every time he tries to use his powers throughout the season. That's never explained why or how or when that train tunnel was built. So that's just where five goes for most of the season every time he tries to use his powers. Allison gains telekinesis, the ability to control things with her mind. And that's about it. I, I think she still has her abilities to rumor people, but now she can control things with her mind. And then Luther gets his strength back, but he also gets his ape form back, which doesn't really make sense because he got that from a blood transfusion from Pojo, not because of his powers. So that's a little bit inconsistent there. I think it was only like Ben, Klaus, and... Uh, Diego that weren't really affected by the Maridold. And then another problem that I had with this season was that there was no emotional like payoff or and then there were also useless side plots with a lot of the characters. Like I no longer had any connection with the characters this season. Um and it could be because I didn't rewatch season three in preparation of season four. But I think certain characters were just assassinated in their own writing and did a lot of nothing on the side that never really added to the overall story. For example, after Klaus gets his powers back, he goes off to this dealer to try to get him to off himself. And it never it obviously doesn't work because he, he can't die. That's his power. And he should notice, I'm pretty sure, but he still does it anyway. And then he gets locked up and buried alive underground for like three, two, three episodes. And that's what he spends most of the season doing. He's just like away, buried alive underground. He doesn't learn anything from this. He doesn't change from this. It's just there for that. That's literally it. And then Luther and Diego were dumbed down as well in like ways that I don't even think they were that unintelligent in season one. So it was also just there for like comedic purposes as well. But it, it just got too cringy and silly because these people are clearly not incompetent. They shouldn't be incompetent, but the writing made them incompetent basically. And then Allison now has a daughter with Ray, but we never see Ray. And the relationship between Allison and her daughter Claire 
seems very like surface level. So it doesn't even really seem real. It just seems like they were trying to act it out for the sake of the plot, I guess. And then as for Victor, it wasn't until I read this comment that pointed out that he was supposed to be like this tough, macho bar owner guy that is a playboy as well, but it never came off that way. It was a lot more laughable when I read that because- Do you think these childish theatrics will stop me? Well, the acting from Elliot Page never really helped out because it just wasn't convincing and the, the character would have with these random outbursts throughout the season that just came out came off as cringe because of like the vocal delivery and the acting basically so the character was like not as convincing as it one as it once was and I think that's not even how Vanya used to act in season, season one so they kind of just changed the character entirely and then the next worst thing that happens to the characters is the addition of a new character named Jennifer and Ben. So I still don't really get it. I couldn't really explain it to you, but basically the original way that Ben died was they were all in a mission in the past and Ben, like they were trying to rescue this package and he they were told not to open this package no matter what. And then Ben opens the package, goes snooping where he shouldn't. And then he sees Jennifer in this like box or something. And like once they were in close contact, instead of this like chain reaction between the Marigold and Ben, and then the Durango in Jennifer. And that is like a catalyst for the world ending. So Reginald shoots both of them and then wipes the memories of the other children. And that's basically how the OG Ben died. <clears throat> and in the final season, Ben sees Jennifer in this diner um, who he doesn't recognize because he's not OG Ben. And he's in a city surrounded by undercover agents. And in mind you, one of the under undercover agents are is Jennifer's step uncle that he knew, that he knew uh, when she was six. And somehow Ben convinces her to run away with him because she doesn't trust the undercover agent, including her own uncle. But she trusts Ben, someone that she just met right then and there. And they basically just run away together somewhere else. And that's literally it. And it doesn't make sense like how or why Ben like is drawn is drawn to her for some reason and vice versa. And it's just very cheesy and cringy when like with their scenes together. But you know, the worst is yet to come in the season because that belongs to Lila and Five. This was by far the worst addition to the storyline that they could have done. And I can't really believe that they thought this was going to be a good idea or received well by the audiences. Like if they took it out, it might have been a better season. Still trash, but slightly better. Basically, the writers thought that, you know, they would make Lila cheat on Diego with Five. And did I forget to mention that Diego and Lila now have children in this timeline? So that makes it even like way worse. And you know you're messing it up when even the star of the character comes up to you and is like telling you like this might not be the right move to make. And I don't really have much else to say. Like this 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 is like self explanatory why it was bad. And I think just bad in and of itself, like it was out of character for five, probably out of character for Lila. And the worst part is that by the end of the show, when all the siblings kind of died, five and Diego never like make up, if you could even do that. So they just kind of die hating each other. And another thing is that only six of the seven siblings learn how OG Ben actually died. Klaus, who is like the one person who had the strongest connection to Ben originally, never learns how he died. So he just kind of dies without ever knowing how the original version of his own brother died. And then there's honestly a lot more wrong with the season. Like I could talk about the wasted usage of Nick Offerman as like an undercover agent character thingy. But, you know, I could also talk about how, like, who Abigail and Reginald actually are or where the planet that they come from or exploring that part of it more. Or just the fact that, like, all the siblings die at the end of the show after four seasons. But, um, yeah, that's where I'll just end it off for now. Like, like, leave a like, leave a comment what you thought about the season, and then subscribe. And then you can follow me on my socials down below. But, yeah, that's about it. Peace. God bless.